Well, um, there's two ways of dealing with debt. You pay it back in hard money or you pay it back in soft money. You pay it back in hard money and you have um, a problem. Um, you have a depression. So throughout history, uh, whenever that was done, pay it back in hard money, uh, eventually um, that was abandoned and you uh, print money. That was what 71 was. That was what March 1933 was. And so um, I think that what you have to think about is the value of money. How much money does one have in debt instruments? And um, do you want to own that as an asset? Uh, I, I think it, I think they're bad assets. And so, uh, and then how do you diversify? And the system also has to deal with um, what is money? What is money? Is, uh, is the dollar going to remain um, the same sort of reserve currency? Um, and then you see the development of alternative monies. We're seeing a variety. I think different types of money will compete with each other in the environment we're in. Um, some, maybe it's um, crypto, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's gold, maybe it's um, other things. Uh, maybe the digital or MMB competes with um, the US dollar. We're gonna come into an environment because everybody thinks that there's, think about how much money is being stored in debt instrument, those debt assets. Th think about how poor those returns are. So that kind of a shift I think is very important. All currencies, have a lot of debt. And so when you look at one relative to the other, there will be a lot of printing. I mean, currency equals debt. And when you hold a currency, you're holding a debt instrument. And so all of those will um, decline in value relative to other things. Now, will the dollar decline more than other currencies? It's almost certain that we're going to come into this environment. We're in this environment in which there's a shifting of the, those currencies. Um, so you're going to see more of China's RMB being used. You're seeing it, uh, India have a direct link uh, with Russia on the uh, currency. So we're in an important change in the currency. But how that is a store of wealth is a different question. So uh, a, a currency is a medium of exchange and a storehold of wealth. And its storehold of wealth um, is now a problem, particularly for the dollar, but it's also a problem for other countries. So that's why you have inflation. As money goes into other things and the, and the cost of borrowing is so low relative to the inflation rate, then it encourage, encourages the borrowing of money and the, and the sale of money. In other words, not holding financial assets like that. So that's, yes, I think you're changing the nature of what money is and what the dollar is as a storehold of wealth. On a scale of one to 10, and this is the only way I think I can maybe ask this one, but on a scale of one to 10, how concerned are you about inflation rate? Um, I don't know, like uh, an, eight, an eight to 10 or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. um, we're beginning a paradigm shift. Uh, a, a paradigm shift um, is a shift from um, a mindset, one mindset, and positioning of that mindset to another mindset and another positioning of that. Um, so for example, the mindset that we were in was that when you have low inflation and um, when you're owning bonds and you're owning cash or um, you, you are operating one way um, and you don't worry about that and companies don't worry about it in their inventories or having larger inventories or homeowners don't worry about inflation as much in the purchases of the houses and so on. Once that shift begins, it causes a reinforcing dynamic. It's like everybody is long bonds. We've been in a 40 year bull market in bonds. And so it's been fine to have. And when that shift starts to take place, you see behavioral shifts that reinforce that cycle in the paradigm. So for example, when there is the selling of bonds, that it makes it more inflationary in and of itself because the amount of debt that has to be sold is not just the deficit, but also the amount of debt that's being sold is those bonds. So now interest rates have to rise a lot or the Federal Reserve has got to come in there and buy more. And then you get uh, wages, people make wage settlements that um, and such things. So a paradigm shift is beginning to take place and that will be also self-reinforcing. And it's taking place in uh, this context of the conflict, which uh, then creates the breakdown of um, 
efficient systems. Each country wants to be self-sufficient. It needs to, to protect itself. And in being self-sufficient in that way, then you have less efficiencies in the system. Um, and all of that becomes self-reinforcing. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.